Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I will show you how you can model this quite detailed headphone in Shaper 3D. I will start with explaining the basic minimal sketch layout, how we then can build step-by-step step all these intricate details and then we will bring everything into the visualization and finish this with a really nice and beautiful product presentation. And with all that said, let's do it. Before we get started, let's make sure we have millimeters as the unit system, and we also have all our snap targets turned on. Let's go to the front view. The easiest part to start with is the headband. We will create a sketch with the arc. We can click somewhere left and right and drag this up a little bit. The arc center point, I want to make sure to be at the origin of the sketch. So I click and drag it to there. Let's lock it so I can't move anymore. The arc circumference will be 175 degrees and the radius will be 90 millimeters. Let's zoom out a little bit. Because the arc center is locked, I can only now rotate these points. But I want these two points to be perfectly horizontal to each other. So I can draw simply a line between them. And then this line, I will make a construction line and make it horizontally constrained. So you know, I cannot move this anymore. Very good. Let's continue with the arc. I will go to one end point and then very slowly move the mouse till, as you can see, it hits the snap target, the continuation of the first arc. I can click, move this a little bit, click again. Let's zoom in and what we created this uh, is actually the end point. Got constraint to this projection arc. And you see now I can just slide it perfectly along it. This is very nice. Here we can set up that the uh, circumference is 40 millimeters and um, here the radius will be 55 millimeters. Very good. So now we have actually everything that is needed as the path for the sweep seen from the front. Let's go to the left view. But first, let's exit the sketch. Then let's go to the left side. Then we create a new sketch. And you notice instantly there is a plane intersection point. On purpose, I will go into a 3D view. And you see now that there, this point is where this would intersect with this arc. And that's a beautiful function. So from that point, I simply draw two lines a little bit wildly. The midpoint should never move. So let's lock it. These two lines, two, I would like to be equal and horizontally constrained. Then I can draw a line up on the left and the right side and an arc that goes over it. To make this nice and uniform, also here, the two lines will be horizontally vertically constrained and then we'll get the equal constraint. This line can be two millimeters. Now I would like to have a distance between the arc and the line of four millimeters. We can do this with a very simple trick. You see here, I draw internally a line from the midpoint onto the arc. This line will be a construction line and vertically constrained. And then we can specify this to be four millimeters. And that basically helps us to make sure that at the outside it's two and at the center it's truly four, five millimeters, as you can see. Very good. This is actually now the top profile for 
the plastic arc. This one is also really white. So let's delete this. We go back to the sketch and make sure, I will select the upper two points, that this is 30 millimeters. So if we then do a sweep again, this looks actually really nice. We can hide the sweep. When I click on uh, one sketch element, then I go back also into the sketch add models and we have the upper profile for the plastic part. Now we would like to create the upholstery that's below it. To do this, I will draw a line down, a line over and up. Also here, all three lines I make horizontal vertically constrained and this should have a height of 16 millimeters. Very good. Then I can use the fit point spline type and from one endpoint to the midpoint on this line to the other endpoint, right click. And then here I can select this endpoint. And you see with the fit point spline, then we have handles which we can drag around. Very useful. And also to make sure that the handles are not dragged at an angle, I can use this line as kind of, kind of like a snap target. These lines too were more like a helper framework. So I can select them and make sure they are just construction lines. Then this profile I can select, select my sweep and sweep it. There, beautiful. This looks really nice. On top, that is nice and um, well upholstered. On the sides, this is maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to show you now how we can make these profiles actually very quickly much thinner. Before we continue, let's hide these two sketches. And I will hide also this plastic part. And then I will select this lower face sketch. And right here at this midpoint, there I draw a line. Escape, rotate my view. You see actually this line from the side view is slightly at an angle. The reason why I'm created this line is when I now select this face of my upholstered body, go to scale, make sure I have non-uniform scale selected. Here's my widget. And the, mid, the widget, when I move this around, has a center point and I can put this on an edge. And then here you see also with this, I have kind of like an end point of this line. And you see the widget slightly rotates. So now it's positioned at the end point of this line and follows the direction of the line. So it's kind of like a snap to or scale to target. And scale this 25%. See, very easy. Let's go to here. We'll do the same. Sketch on this plane. There's this line along the grid. Select the face, scale, bring this over. There, rotate it, and 25%. These two sketches we don't need anymore. Can delete them. And when we show the rest, you see everything perfectly matches up. This is beautiful. Very good. Okay. Now, we can show this other sketch. We can continue a little bit before we do the speaker part. We can select this bottom face, select this arc and make a sweep. Very nice. And can do the same here too. And sweep. Cool. So this is kind of like a continuation. This is later going to be real upholstery. And then here properly 
in the inside, this will change into a, a stiffer or plastic part. And this will give you this illusion of just all being the same internal round material or we have outside the sharper plastic material. These two bodies, if we want, we can mirror over to the other side. To do this, I can go to mirror and now I need a mirror plane. Check this out. I click on right view. Then I have the grid. Click on that grid. And when I go through 3D view, you see that's actually now the grid. Oh. And keep originals on. Done. There we are. Beautiful. And that is, for example, how easy it is to create this headband with the sketch. We could now start working on everything for the speaker. To start, let's go to a right view. There we are. I move down a little bit. I go to sketch, ellipse on the Z axis. I draw the line up. This should be 45 millimeters and to the side, 40 millimeters. Very good. Exit sketch. Now this ellipse, I would like to extrude by 10 millimeters. And then I select the face, go to the extrude command, extrude this out 15 millimeters, and then I give this a nice draft and say 45 degree. Beautiful. So what I can do now next is I will click and drag a selection and select all the objects inside there, which also includes and that ellipse inside the sketch. Go to the front view here, move this to somewhere else and pay attention too. I have a new sketch now. This is actually the ellipse. I got moved out. So that's actually how easy this is. I can select all these parts here again and then rotate this and then visualize. Okay, so where roughly would I like this to sit? what degree and here this does look actually pretty good very nice okay very good at this point now we can work on thinking about how do we design this mechanism where this is connected to um, kind of like a bigger part in here, there's a swivel so that the rest can actually rotate around. Before we do this, we actually have to rebuild this. This is actually just a dummy piece. Before I continue, you see this is 25 millimeters material thickness. So double click, and delete this body. This ellipse, I know I would like in uh, move mode, make a copy and move this 25 millimeters. The reason why I made a copy of this ellipse and moved it is because I have the center point and the center point should be um, having a circle 60 millimeters. Very good. And then this I can delete. Very good. And this ellipse, I will re-extrude to 10 millimeters, but then this uh, face of the ellipse or elliptical body plus the circle sketch, I will now loft together, make a beautiful blend from elliptical to a circular shape. See, pretty nice. This works really good. Okay, very good. To then continue, I can see now here I have a little bit of an of an offset. Um, I would like maybe this part to be closer to here. So what I will do is here, this is one sketch, that is the other sketch plus selecting the bodies. Then I can go to a side view and move this around maybe somewhat like there. 
a little bit further back. Okay, yeah, this looks pretty good. Very nice. Okay, so with this position or reposition and task, what I did, I can do the following. Check this out. I select this um, plastic part, select this face, and then I select the split command. Click done. When I delete this, look at this. And we have a beautiful flat profile. We have a lot of sketches here. So let's select and drag them all into a folder connected together. So this is much easier now to take a look at. Now I can think about, okay, so this is the outer edge. I would like to have a certain amount of millimeters of material wall um, thickness. So maybe here also these I drag into one folder and height. There's the sketch. I can make an offset with four millimeters. This will be good. Very nice. And you see here I have these endpoints. I can from one endpoint, this is actually perfectly on the grid, draw a line down. Or because I also have this on the grid, I simply draw a line straight up, go over, there we are. I will hide these bodies. You see here I have some extra projected lines coming in. I can remove those, stop the lock, and then this I connect. To make sure nothing really changes much, maybe here these points I lock so they don't move. And then this all I make horizontal vertical. Sometimes we can make by accident changes of sketches. This way we prevented this to even happen. And this line I can move up a little bit because what I can do now is the following. I can select this sketch and also this body and for example, isolate it. And you see, very nice. Then let's simply select these sketch profiles and start cutting into the body. Let's go by 12 millimeters. Very good. Now we have actually the cavity for, let's un isolate, um, yeah, where actually the head part, the band connects to. Obviously we remove that volume, um, but this is not really a big problem. We can simply select all this and I extrude this in 10 millimeters. Very good. You see now there, this connects. With these uh, bodies created, we can select these three elements, go isolate. And what I will do is I will select them all and simply say union. So now that it's all one body, beautiful. I can style this a little bit, make, or make this a little bit more sound and thicker. For example, by giving this a fillet there. Very good. Unhide or unisolate there. Pretty cool. This is now really a perfect fit. So we, um, we want actually this cup to rotate around a little bit. So what I have to do, I will select this, I will isolate it and then select this, this, and this face, and then I will expand this one millimeter. Yeah. To the outside. Now we have a one millimeter gap. This looks quite big, but we need this type of emotion too. We can give this a nice, um, fillet one or two millimeters. Very good one millimeter and here a nice rounding. What about two millimeters? 
and three millimeters. Now we can play with this. Um, two millimeters. Now we can can also see it. Do we want to perfectly match those? So two millimeters, three millimeters. Now one millimeter. It's really up to you to decide how uh, significant you want to make these changes. I'll go back to one millimeter. They are nice and small and tight. This is like a, a really tiny detail for the moment. So you can do kind of like to play around with how now this transition would be. Very good. This actually looks really nice. Um, at this point, it makes sense also to block out, for example, the upholstery. There are two very easy ways. First, I'm going to extrude by 15 millimeters a new disc out, new body. Then this body I will isolate, select the front and back face and say shell. 15 millimeters. I will actually go by 16 millimeters and then the outside I shrink by one millimeter. So I have like 15 internal. Oh, look at that. This obviously is very brutish, but this is more like a form study. This can look really good. Let's select actually both at the same time here. So the um, all the three objects, the casing and upholstery, and then we do quickly a mirror and take a look at. Yeah, this has a good volume. We can undo the last step. This was just only for verification. So 15, 15 by 15 works really good. So this body was a study. We can delete it. And then I go to the side view and sketch. Um, I have to show the sketch here and check this out. You see there is a start and an end snapping point. And this line perfectly sits centered on that ellipse. So beautiful. This line I do not want to move, so I lock it. And then I can now consider upholstery is like is really soft. So I will draw myself very quickly here something that looks like a rectangle. First, U and U perpendicular. These two perpendicular. And then this and this can be perpendicular. Now everything kind of like this is parallel to here. The distance I would like to be one millimeter, let's say, yeah, two millimeters looks good. Then this will be 15 millimeters and all three lines be equal, please. So this is actually just a helper. So a framework made as a construction line. So now I can go to the spline, uh, change this for example to the uh, spline control point and then click, drag this out. To make nice corners, I might need two points. Click, click, one at the center, corner, click, click, and then I go back and um, right click. Very good. So because it's upholstery, I can nicely sculpt this to the, the way how I want. So I trust a little bit also my, my eyes. This looks really good. In 3D view now, I can select this profile, select this outer arc um, or profile of the ellipse and do a sweep. There, I don't know. This actually <laughs> looks much, much nicer. This is pretty, pretty cool. Very good, you see? Now if we want, we can one more time do actually a copy of everything, bring this over there. Now this already looks quite nice. Let's turn off the sketches, pretty good. Okay, so this is actually uh, then how easy it is to block out all the details. And then we now can actually go ahead and add the interface parts.
Let's actually continue with the easiest interface element. That would be the USB-C. And if I look through this way, this is going to be how I'm wearing it. I would like to have this down here. So this body I will isolate. I would like to position the USB-C port right at the midpoint, the center. So I select these two um, uh, faces and then I can create a plane right at the center in between. This plane now, I select and rotate 90 degrees and the widget I reposition, realign, and then I can slide this one down a little bit below. Beautiful. So on this uh, construction plane, we will create a sketch. You see here is the center line. That's perfect. And for the opening for the USB-C port, all we need is a rectangle, rectangle from center. I go right here to the grid center and drag this one out to be nine millimeters and three. I have to zoom in a little bit more. There we are. Click, very good, very nice. Exit the sketch. This construction plane we can hide. Um, I will delete this because essentially this sketch is also working like a construction plane already. Then this now we can drag in. This is for example, minus six millimeters. So let's say we want this to be six more millimeters in. So this has to go minus 12 in. There we are, beautiful. The last thing to finish this, we don't really have these sharp edges, so we can select those edges. There we are. And then we will round this nicely. Very good. This looks really beautiful. Perfect. There we are. Then we can uh, and the isolation mode. Now I would like to down here have a dial and um, kind of like on the back here have actually a push button to turn this on. So this piece we also now isolate. We do the same thing. There's a construction plane. And then now this actually we don't move in any way we actually will, for example, project this arc, sorry, this um, ellipse onto this construction plane, project as a sketch. This body now, we can actually hide. So we will exit the isolation mode. Then you see now here is this sketch, this plane now I can also delete. There's the sketch, isolate the sketch, very good. Nothing here should move. So I lock all the dimensions. There, very good. Okay, let's go with a circle. Somewhere here we make a circle, um, 30 millimeters the diameter. And then you see we can define how far should this stick out. It should really not be far sticking out just if I rub my thumb over it, it sticks out just a little bit, three millimeters. Now, as you can see, I drew here the line as a helper to measure this. This is good. Okay. Very nice. This will be where, for example, the scroll wheel will be. Uh, and I can select this and then extrude this 2.5 millimeter, very nice. Select everything and then go the opposite way, 2.5 millimeters. So this is now five millimeter material thickness. Show everything and there we can see where it is. As you can see, I always create very basic geometry to first check fitting, proportion. Is this too big? Is this too small? We could select this, 
and drag this onto the face, move this in even more, move this further out um, to just get an idea for it. And then always we can add more details to it. This actually, I would like to have nice rounded edges. So 1.5, very good. And here I will click on this icon and set this to a G2 fillet, very good. Then I can select the main body, select the wheel and subtract that wheel from the main body, but make sure keep the removed bodies. Very good. When I select this, unhide it, you see, no, there is the space cut out for it. Very good. Okay. Let's, before we do all the detailing, add actually the on off button. So I select that sketch one more time, isolate it. Now somewhere here, I would like to have this nice um, small button. And he, I would like this button to be perfectly ten, uh, perpendicular on this arc. Let me show you a little trick. So here I draw a line. And you see this line now has a midpoint and I can draw a line to be perpendicular to this. Uh, one second. Uh, yep, 90 degrees. There we are. And then, oh, you see, uh, this moves. And you also noticed other elements here moved a little bit. So I need to be very careful about, uh, so here I can draw, for example, a line and then all this I lock and then this should not rotate anymore. Very good. And this was more just a little helper. Cool. Okay. So now I can with this slide this around and decide where should this button be? Super easy. Another line, another line, uh, this line and this line will be parallel. Same to here. This will be parallel. Now we have internal 90 degrees and 2.5 millimeter um, is actually the radius. So we have a diameter of five millimeter. This should not really stick out very far. So we can push this actually in a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay, very good. There we are. Then the two profiles we can select and then do a revolve. There we are. Unhide everything. Beautiful. And then I can push this even further in, make this really snug. There are some really interesting modeling techniques we can do. So first, from the main body, I will cut this one out. Subtract. There we are. And then this face, for example, I can fold over the elliptical surface. So now you see this is actually perfectly flush and let's push this out by one millimeter. So now this is actually not just a flat part, but it's actually art. It follows this design. Oh, this looks really good. Beautiful. So we are now actually at a point. Now we can add all the nice details. So here, half a millimeter G2. Here we can also do half a millimeter G2. G2 is a nicer look for the fillet. We do now the same also for this part, half a millimeter and G2. This is really nice. We can always later um, change the radius or remove fillets. There we are. Very good. This is beautiful. Then this and this body we can union together. This body and this body. 
we can union together and these are the main parts actually these two here we can delete then this whole unit we will mirror over to the other side there we are you see no perfectly fits in for everybody who would like to do this, you could continue also rounding more edges. I will now, for example, select the plastic frame and then the left and the right um, housing for the speaker and then union that together. Then I will get a shared edge, which I could select and round more. I could also round this more and then round counter edges. This is really something for you to decide how then you would like to round all these edges for a nice and quick um, rendering. I will just in a very basic quick way round these edges with one millimeter. So I get nice highlights on these edges. Here this actually has to be a very small 0.1 millimeter. So this is running across all these uh, fillets. So then here too, point 0.1, very nice. This looks really lovely. Then I can select these two, one millimeter, and then those point 0.1 for the inside. And then this was one. And here is the last one, one millimeter. These are sharp edges, point 0.1, very good. Little bit rounder. And with this, basically we finished the modeling. We can clean up everything a little bit, put all our um, bodies into a folder. This I will now rename into bodies. And all our our sketches, I will call sketches. There we are. And then we would be able to go to the visualization tool and create kind of like a material theme and do a rendering. So let's quickly do that. I will first close actually the sidebar. Then I go to visualization. There we are. Let's go to environment. And I will select a nice and dark environment really good these environments are actually really useful we also have different highlights and you can pay attention to how everything is being illuminated this is good perfect let's go to this view then materials so basically the plastic part will be some sort of of a plastic now we have for example abs glossy and matte so we can explore different materials i will add actually the plastic on all the plastic parts and then i can go to the material click on it and change for example the color now i would like this instead of being glossy abs matte abs you see the material carries over it's actually very easy the way how this works. If I go to plastic, then I can scroll directly only the different type of materials. What about a matte polypropylene? Very good. We also have actually a slider for the, the texture or the structure on it. We can make it bigger or smaller. And I will make my design a little bit brighter. Beautiful. Cool. Okay. We have these buttons here. I would like these buttons to be, to look like they are rubberized. So I can go ahead and go to plastic, scroll down. Here I have a matte silicon rubber and I can just drag this onto these two bodies. Scroll up. There's no the material. Okay click on it and then change, for example, the color to a nice dark color. By the way, there is no pure black and pure white. So keep those really at a 
dark gray if you want to make something that should be black. Now we have actually the upholstery and that should be some sort of a leather material. So let's go to leather. We have different types here. We can drag this onto these parts. Very good. And then here, if I move this actually onto the side part, you see that the whole body is selected. So to circumvent this, simply select the faces. Then it tells you, hey, change this material. And I will select the existing leather material I have. Really good. Okay. The grain is a little bit too big. So let's go back to the leather material, change the grain, with the slider. What about we explore the other materials for leather? We have this full grain, this one, this one, oh, and this actually looks really good. Also leathers can be colorized, very nice. And there we are. In the inside, we have actually the speaker mesh. And then I select actually this face and I go to change and then fabric and scroll down to where I have the speaker mesh. You will see that the speaker mesh is also applied to the, yeah, the outer part. So before we do this, we have to actually go back to our modeling environment. And what I will do now is you see here, this is my upholstery and it has an edge and this edge I will project onto the surface of this speaker body here. Go to more and say uh, project and edge. Basically what this means, it will actually um, kind of like cut that surface. Maybe to make this easier visible, I will isolate this part. And there is, you know, I have actually this shape. So let's do the same also on the other side. And project and edge, very good. Then we can go back to visualization and then this and this face I select and change fabric speaker mesh very good when we zoom in a little bit and then we can play with the size this is really good also here this can be colorized beautiful cool this looks really fantastic so you see on purpose i set them the environment actually first because it really has a strong impact than how actually your materials will look. And for the final presentation, then I can go back to the environment, click on the cock icon. I can rotate the light, for example, and pay attention to how does this look we also have the light intensity. We can play with this, maybe a little bit lower. If you don't want to have a drop shadow, we can simply turn this off, but it looks actually really good with the drop shadow. Done. And then we could click on capture and capture this image.